Hey everyone, welcome into the App and Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. And today we are going to talk about partial refunds. Not the partial refunds that are legitimate, where you get an item back in a different condition than it was received, and you only refund part of the original cost while you have the item in hand. I covered that in last week's video I did on how to handle returns during Q4. And in fact, this video is kind of writing on the tailcoats of that topic. I'll have it pop up for you at the end and you can watch it if you haven't already. Today, we're talking about the partial refunds or full refunds people are giving out to buyers without requiring a return. This topic is uh, one of those topics I think can cause a lot of discourse. You've got both sides of the aisle and um, I'm here to tell you what I think about it. And I'm going to tell you that what I think about it, I think is the correct way to do things. And I think I'm right. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to agree with me, but um, clearly within our business, we're going to do things the way that we see best. Um, we're going to do the best business practices. We're going to follow the rules. We're going to make sure that buyers are being honest. We're going to make sure that we are not losing money when we don't need to be. And so, um, you know, if you disagree with me, that's fine. Just be respectful down in the comments. Um, I do have to say there's going to be some tough love in this video. And I may actually end up ranting at one point because this is one of two soapboxes I have. I have deferring views on a lot of things within the reselling world. A lot of people do. Do I do free returns? Do I do free shipping? Do I do calculated shipping? There's a lot of things that we all do differently and think differently and have differing opinions on. Um, and that's, you know, par for the course. We all run our own business and we can all do as we see fit. However, there are two topics that I get very, um, I have very strong opinions on. One of them is that race to the bottom and that fast nickel. And the other one is the partial refunds. So if I do rant, it's because I feel very strongly about this and I really do feel like giving in to buyers and allowing them to continue these behaviors and get partial refunds or free items completely is uh, detrimental to the entire reselling community as a whole. It's detrimental absolutely on eBay, but it can be on any platform. I just don't think it's a good practice and I don't think that it's something that any of us should be doing. Number one, you're teaching buyers to be dishonest. If somebody is already dishonest, they're going to be dishonest. Uh, but if you allow them to continue that behavior and you feed into it, they're gonna do it even more. If you have someone who's on the cusp of like, mm, and then they find out they can get away with something, guess what they're gonna do? You're just teaching the buyers, hey, all you have to do to get a free item or an item at half off is complain after it's delivered and or and or threaten negative feedback with that. Um, buy something cheap for 12 bucks because you know it's not worth the return. You know you can get your money back. You're just teaching them all of this dishonest behavior. You're training them to get free stuff. You're training them to try to fish for partials and you're annoying other buyers or other sellers in the process because every time you give in to a buyer and teach them that this behavior is going to reward them, they're going to do it to the next seller and the next seller and the next seller. So every time I have to double down and stand my ground with a buyer who doesn't like the shade of pink their shirt is and they want half their money back. They're doing it because along the lines, some other seller did give them half their money back for some dumb reason. Like, oh, this is wrinkled. This isn't the right color. I'm going to leave negative feedback, whatever it was. Somewhere along the lines, they were taught that this works and now they're trying it on me and I'm having to spend my time and energy um, holding my ground with them and trying to retreat, 
reteach and retrain them that uh -uh, this isn't how it works. You're affecting the entire community. You are affecting every single seller who in the future will deal with one of these monsters you've created. And you've also been part of the problem by creating these monsters. The bottom line is no return, no refund. That's not hard, is it? If you don't return an item, you don't get your money back. There are obviously exceptions to this rule. The two most notable, if you know that you made a mistake, if it was clear that it was your mistake, um, you can go ahead and give them a partial refund or refund them all of it and let them keep the item if you don't want it back because it's just not worth the return shipping. But that is only if it is 1000% clearly and you know for a fact that it was your mistake, your fault, you mixed up labels, you sent the wrong item, you overlooked a flaw, something like that. Um, if you can pinpoint that it was your mistake, then yes, refund half their money, um, refund all of it, let them keep it. But only if it's your mistake, not just to make them go away, not just, I don't want to deal with it, not just because it's not worth the return. Um, the second time, I think it's okay. If you send something breakable and they're claiming it arrived broken and they've provided you with pictures like of the actual broken item and maybe of the packaging being damaged and you can file uh, insurance claim through the post office, I wouldn't want the broken item back. So I would just refund them and let them keep it. But I would definitely file my claim to the USPS. All of priority items have, um, they're covered under that. So if it was something that was sent priority and it arrived broken, you can file a claim to the USPS. It does take a while. We've won everyone we have ever had to file because we had photos. You're going to sometimes run into buyers who don't give you photos of the packaging and just of the broken item. And you might question, well, did they drop it and break it? Because they're not sending me pictures of the packaging. I don't really fight with them over that. If I can get any kind of pictures as proof so that I can file um, with the post office, I don't really want a broken item back. I can't resell it. I don't want to pay to ship it back. They can just have it. They can have their refund and then I will fight for my refund under the um, insurance the priority shipping provides. But those are like the only two instances ever. If you know you were at fault or if it's a broken item that was shipped priority that you can file a claim on. Other than that, you should not be giving them any money until they return the item. No return, no refund, period. One of the things I see that works really well, especially with new resellers, is the fear of negative feedback. Number one, if they threaten negative feedback or allude to the fact that they're gonna give you negative feedback, if they don't get a partial refund, if they don't get a discount, if they don't get some money back, that's called feedback extortion. And almost always that's gonna come in a message over the eBay system and you can report it and you don't have to refund them. Just because they threaten to give you negative feedback or elude, you know, I feel like I should get $10 back or I'm gonna leave negative feedback. That is feedback extortion. It is not allowed on, feed, on eBay feedback, I was about to say. <laughs> it is not allowed on eBay at all. And if you stick to your guns and you tell them you have to return it for a refund, and they leave negative feedback, you can um, call eBay or go to eBay for Business on Facebook and they can look at your messages and they can see where that feedback extortion happened and they can see that you did offer a refund if they returned the item. You did everything that you were required to do under the policies and they'll remove the feedback. Anytime a buyer threatens or even just alludes, if they say it in any type of way, I want this or I'm going to leave negative feedback, that's extortion and any feedback they leave will be removed. Just don't engage with them. Don't fight with them. Don't argue with them. 
but make sure you keep the messages um, and then you have a case there and they'll remove the feedback. So don't let the threat of negative feedback scare you because you're going to get it removed. It's extortion. And if you do everything that you're supposed to do, eBay is going to side with you on that. They will remove the feedback. Um, under the topic of don't engage and don't argue, don't let emotions get involved, you guys. This is business. So number one, your emotions have no place here. You should never, ever let your emotions into your business. And you should never let your emotions into any type of contact or engagement you have with your buyers. You should 1000% always be completely professional. Your responses to them should be cookie cutter. It, they Every time you respond to a, a buyer, it should sound like it's a response that you could send to any buyer at any time, just replacing the name at the top. Always cookie cutter, always professional. Don't engage in arguments. Don't get emotional with them. Don't accuse them of anything. Don't, you know, make it known that you think they're a scammer. None of that. As long as you remain professional, you'll be fine. What we do when we receive any kind of message that sounds like they're threatening feedback, negative feedback, if they don't get their way, that sounds like they're fishing for a partial refund or they want all their money back and to keep a free item. Anytime we get any of those situations pop up for us, we respond to them with a very professional message, very cookie cutter. Hello, we are sorry you are not satisfied with your purchase. We do offer returns on this item. Please open a return. Once we have the item return to us back in the condition it was sent out in, we will be more than happy to refund you. We never say we will be more than happy to refund you in full or we will refund you in full because uh, for like the past year and a half, it was around 2019 eBay Open, they announced the new seller protections, uh, the partial refunds I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video. If they do a switcheroo on you or it was new with tags and it comes back and the tags are ripped off, if they return shoes that were new that they clearly wore somewhere, if they return it in any way different than the way you sent it out, there's now a system in place where you can um, refund up to 50% 50, 50 less than their original cost. So I'd never say I'll refund you and we'll refund you in full or we'll be happy to refund you in full because I don't know what they're returning to me. Until it's returned and I can open the package and inspect it, I don't know how much money I'm giving them back. They might get a full refund. They might get 50% if they rip the tags off. Um, so I just keep it just refund. So it's just, you know, a basic cookie cutter apology. We're sorry you're not happy with your purchase. We offer returns. Please open a return case. Once we receive the item back in the condition it was sent out in, we will be happy to issue you a refund, the Hippo Hut team, period. That is the only engagement I will have with them. Um, sometimes you may have to send a second message, but keep that professional as well. If they write back and they insist, I don't want to return it, it's too much trouble, I don't want to, and they're still fishing and crying and threatening feedback or trying to get you to just refund them some money. Um, Sometimes I will send a second message and it will just say, per eBay and our company's policies, we do not offer partial refunds. If you would like to return the item, once you receive it in the condition it was received, it was sent in, we will issue a refund. I kind of reiterate that a second time just to make it very clear to them. Um, and I also make it clear that per eBay, eBay policy and our company, we don't offer partials. What normally happens after the first message, I would say 90 plus percent of them go away. Of all the messages we get every single day, every single week, fishing for a partial refund, trying to get something back for nothing, the minute I send that first message saying to send it back, I never hear from them again. Maybe 1% will send another message and keep trying those ones will go away after the second message. 
And then you're left with the very small percentage who will actually open a return. And out of the returns opened, only a small fraction of them are actually shipped back to us. We are constantly having returns that sit there until after the deadline, the buyer had to ship it back and having them closed out. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you stick to your guns, most of these folks are just gonna go away. But if you give in and you give them that partial refund, you are contributing to the problem. You're creating these little monsters that are going to go buy things from other sellers and they're going to pull the same crap on them and try to get a partial refund until they run into someone like me and realize eh, that's not going to work here. Um, but if you hadn't have given in to them, most of them go away and you're not out that money. Why are you giving these buyers half their money, two bucks? I don't care what it is. Why are you giving them anything? You shouldn't be. They should return the item to get their refund, period. But what blows my mind is out of all of the messages we get all of the time, 90% of them will go away after that first message because 90% of them just wanted a partial refund. They don't want to be bothered with the return. They don't really want to return it. They want to keep the item. They just want some money back because some seller along the way gave in and gave them that partial. So they're trying it on me. But the amount of them that just go away, it blows my mind because there's so many sellers out there who would have given all of those people a partial refund and you didn't have to be out that money. You didn't have to be out that money and you didn't have to contribute to the problem because they would have went away. And even the really persistent ones usually go away after the second message. And then your honest ones who really think that it's ugly or didn't look like the color they thought it was or it really doesn't fit, those buyers will actually open a return and ship it back because they want their money back. But the majority of them don't want to send it back. And even then, the ones that open the returns I would say probably only one or 2% of them actually ship the thing back because I think two things. I think one, they're calling your bluff. So if they tried for a partial refund, you stuck to your guns, you made sure they knew they weren't getting anything until the return was open. They may open a return to call your bluff to see if you really think it's worth having it shipped back. And if you give them a partial at that time, wow, you really are contributing to the problem. But if you just let the return sit there and time out, they're not going to ship it back. They don't want to. They were either, um, they're calling your bluff. Or the second thing, I think people just get busy, get lazy, don't want to deal with it. So they may open a return and honestly want to send it back, but they just never get around to it. But the amount of people that literally just go away versus the amount of people that actually open a return, there's it blows my mind because it's such a high percentage. And those are the people that are getting the partial refunds from other sellers that aren't like us, that don't stick to our guns. Um, and you didn't have to do that because they would have just went away. And if they're really persistent and they keep messaging you and they're threatening and they're name calling and they leave negative feedback, again, that's extortion. You can get it removed. You can report the buyer. You can block the buyer. You are not obligated by eBay under any policy to give any money back to any buyer without a return. You are not obligated. You do not have to. It does not matter what the buyer says to you. You do not have to give them any money back until they return the item. Honest buyers that legitimately don't like what they got or it doesn't fit, they will probably ship it back. But most of them are going to go away. And I, I think even a portion of the ones that go away may be honest. Like I said, they might just get busy, they forget, or they just don't want to deal with it at the end of the day. So they just never ship it back and the return goes away. Um, but just think about all those people that we deal with. On, I mean, we, we're high volume sellers. So we deal with a lot of people. We get so many a message or two a day and then we get maybe one or two returns opened every other day and maybe one or two returns a week do the math most of them go away why are you giving money to people who all you have to do is type the same message out to everybody that would go away
You can literally pull up a notepad and type your response one time and just copy paste it to every buyer who's trying for a partial. And if you want a typed out copy of it, I'll put it in our Facebook group. If you're not in there, it's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. There's a link down below to join. I'll be happy to create a file in there and type this out for you guys. And you can just copy and paste it every single time in response to them. They'll go away. If they don't go away, you can do the second one. If after that they don't go away, I don't um, I don't suggest engaging after the second message. Um, you can block them for one. They can still message you, though, because they purchased something from you. But I would block them. And if they get abusive or whatever, you can report them. Um, but it just, I, I sit here sometimes and I think about all, if you have, if you do the math on how many people we deal with, all those people are getting refunds from other sellers. They have to be, they wouldn't be trying to get a partial from us if somebody hadn't given into them somewhere. People learn these behaviors. And in fact, it, um, it never saw the light of day. I, I approve all the comments on this channel. Um, I did have a comment last week that I did not approve, but it basically was a buyer who came on one of my YouTube videos and said, hey, everyone, here's how you can get free stuff on eBay. And it basically was a walkthrough on how to do feedback extortion, how to get partial refunds, how to open false item not as describes. Guys, these people exist. They are out there. There are entire Facebook groups that teach people how to do this. And you are not going to get in trouble with eBay as long as you offer a return. So if, you know, even if they say my item arrived broken, but they don't provide proof or anything, if you say, well, you know, I'd like to see pictures or could you send it back, you're fine. You're going to be covered by eBay because you're not obligated to refund anyone until you get your return. Um, so don't worry about getting in trouble or um, dings from eBay. Don't worry about that negative feedback, especially if they're a threat. That's the one thing I don't understand. If someone literally says, give me half my money back or I'm leaving negative feedback, why are you giving them half their money back? They literally just feedback extorted you and you can get any negative feedback removed. At the end of the day, every time you give in to one of these people and give them a partial refund, you're hurting everyone. You're hurting every single seller on every single platform. You're not doing any favors to the community. You're training buyers to get free stuff. That's all you're doing. All right, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the little bell so you're notified when I put out new content. Until next time, guys, go be productive, go make some money. And as always, thank you for spending some time and hanging out with me today. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all are the best. Bye.